This is the story about the rise and fall of Rayfish Footwear, an internet startup that crafted personalized sneakers from genetically engineered Stingray leather. Using a unique bio customization technique, the company claimed to be able to grow fish with skin patterns designed by users. In the first few weeks after the launch of its website, rayfish.com, the company seemed bound for success. The era of mass production is over. We've entered the era of bio-customized products, which means that customers can grow their own products according to their own personal desires. Numerous prominent blogs, newspapers and television stations reported on its innovative business model. The shoes are made out of genetically engineered Stingray leather. So isn't that nice? And you know what? It only costs you $1,800. Almost 10,000 customers designed a shoe with the online tool, expressing their desire for a bio-customized sneaker. Despite the company's statements on the humane treatment of both its animals and its workers, there was a storm of controversy surrounding Rayfish footwear. The backlash culminated in a break-in by animal rights activists at the Rayfish Aquaculture Facility, where allegedly the entire stock of genetically grown stingrays was stolen and released in the ocean. The Rayfish CEO, Raymond Ong, responded with a passionate video statement. The outrage should not be that you can buy an utterly unique, handmade and humanely produced pair of sneakers for $18,000. The outrage should be that you can buy a brand new pair of flimsy, disposable sneakers produced under deplorable conditions somewhere on the other side of the world for $20. While Rayfish was hit hard and having trouble finding new investors to reboot its business, the escaped genetically engineered fishes were out in the open, free to reproduce and interbreed with existing species. Soon, strangely patterned rays started appearing in pictures and videos by tourists and local fishermen. As footage of the escaped fish became increasingly outlandish, skepticism began to creep across the internet as many proposed the company was just a little too fishy. Everyone was asking the question, is this real? For two years, a team of designers, animators, programmers and writers at the Next Nature Network in Amsterdam worked on the construction of the fictional Rayfish company and the story that revolved around it. So we, uh, we started this project because we were completely fascinated with our strange relationship we have with animals. On the one hand, we have animals we keep as pets and we treat them with the greatest care. Cats, dogs, goldfishes, we love them. Then on the other hand, there are the animals we keep in industry for food and leather production. And we hardly know anything about them. So there's this strange gap in between where nothing happens. So we try to make something in that gap, make it very realistic and see how people would respond. In the beginning the idea was very simple. What if you can make a shoe out of a fish? But this idea started getting bigger and bigger. So to make all of this believable we had to design everything from scratch. The corporate identity, the company's website with the design tool. Uh, we made the shoes out of real stingray leather. There's the commercial. We had an actor to play the CEO and we played the burglars ourselves in the break-in video. And of course we did a lot of photoshopping with real stingrays. But none of them were harmed during production. Famed Dutch shoe designer Jan Janssen collaborated on crafting a limited edition of genuine stingray leather shoes. The skin is so beautiful of the, this uh, stingray. If you see this structure here on the, uh, on the back of the, of the skin, which you can uh, use then uh, here on the thong of the shoe. It's, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful material to work with. As with a film or novel, the team scripted a story that unfolded itself on the internet over time, with room for the media and public to play their part in the story. 
Well, after the company website and the commercial were launched, it took only a few days before it was picked up by some journalists of prominent magazines. And after that, the dynamics of the internet took over and the story exploded. It was good to see that there were skeptical journalists as well, who interviewed scientists and asked them to respond to the claims uh, Rayfish was making. Huffington Post and Live Science both interviewed Utah State biologist Randy Lewis, a skeptic from the start. We contacted him on Skype for his take on the project. I know the people in that field, so I, I know then it still wasn't, uh, you know, completely doable at, at this stage of the game. But certainly, uh, I, I would not bet against that sort of, of possibility in, uh, in the future. So whether you love them or hate them, Rayfish footwear is still currently fiction. But the debate was 100% fact. <laughs>